Good day, classmates, and I'm Myra. I'm Mike, and I'm here to discuss uh, the manufacturing information system. So, in an organization, uh, the need for information has always been there. Um, information systems uh, used to exist without a computerized environment and uh, the automation of this um, manufacturing processes has uh, enhanced the availability of information in an organization. So um, with the uh, computers, uh, it allows uh, an organization to uh, use computer-aided design, uh, which um, allows uh, to design and redesign uh, a product quicker and faster in an organization. Also, uh, an organization can use a simulation for their products. For example, if you're manufacturing an airplane, so you don't need to expose your product on uh, harsh conditions or weather. You could just uh, program it in the system so that you could try or analyze uh, the capability of your product or the airplane. Next would be uh, computer-aided manufacturing. So computers assist in um, manufacturing uh, products by programming microcomputers uh, to handle some functions like uh, analyzing the product in the assembly line or uh, also programming uh, a computer to uh, handle multiple tasks at the same time. Lastly, um, robots can be used in manufacturing so in cases uh, that um, some procedures are hazardous or risky to human beings so you could employ uh, robots to do the job. So uh, manufacturing information system has um, input and output subsystems. So input subsystems uh, is composed of uh, data processing, industrial engineering, and uh, manufacturing intelligence. On the other hand, so output subsystems uh, is consist of uh, production, inventory, quality, and uh, cost. So let's, let's discuss uh, these subsystems one by one. Let's start with uh, data processing. So um, data processing uh, focuses on the flow of three main manufacturing resources. So number one would be materials. So it's important uh, that an organization tracks uh, the receipt of, uh, receipt of raw materials to production and to the transformation of these uh, materials into uh, finished or final goods. Also, personnel. So the second one uh, would be tracking personnel to be able to uh, uh, for example, track their uh, attendance. So uh, an organization may provide um, access IDs for time in and time out so that uh, you, uh, they could generate a report uh, for attendance. And then for uh, machines, so machines are also monitored in an organization to make uh, accessible data. So usually uh, it records uh, the machine's expected number of uh, hours in operations, uh, the actual number of hours of operation, and the number of times it has broken or underwent on maintenance. Next uh, subsystem would be the industrial engineering subsystem. So this subsystem is, uh, is uh, capable of studying manufacturing operations. Uh, it also identifies uh, manufacturing operations uh, area for improvement and also recommends specific uh, improvements for those uh, areas. And lastly, it sets uh, production standards in an organization. So by setting uh, production standards, uh, they're looking uh, into production process and uh, determine how long it should actually take for a process to complete. So these performance standards are then stored in a database and together with the actual performance, uh, whenever there's unusually large differences between actual and um, expected performance, these are reported to the management. So next subsystem would be the manufacturing intelligence subsystem and this subsystem focuses on uh, labor force and uh, supplier force. Labor force is uh, finding the right uh, personnel for the job so the system is communicating with the personnel uh, department and uh, provides the requirements for the labor for the personnel to be able to get the right uh, person for the job um, by uh, communicating with uh, the community, schools, job hunters and uh, for the supplier force so it's uh, finding the right uh, supplier with the quality uh, raw materials and uh, also low cost offering low cost so let's go to the output subsystems 
So it starts with uh, production subsystems and it aids uh, management in uh, deciding uh, if they need uh, to produce a new uh, product facility, production facility for a plant. So sometimes uh, if uh, their existing plant uh, became obsolete or uh, too costly to maintain and cannot support the volume of production or cannot support the production of new product. So this, uh, this considering these items can be considered in uh, deciding whether to have a new plant or production facility. Also, it helps in uh, management uh, in deciding the plant location. So, because uh, having a plant location, you need to consider the following. So, the land cost, the access, accessibility, and the culture of the community and surrounding communities. And then, uh, production subsystem also performs uh, linear programming which is a technique used to optimize uh, a given objective function given several constraints. So, next uh, output subsystem would be inventory subsystem and it is, it is concerned with uh, raw materials and work in process. Uh, it is also managing uh, stack maintenance and carrying costs such as taxes, insurance, and costs associated with spoilage and obsolescence. It also maintains a uh, safety stock, so safety stock uh, prevents or minimizes uh, stock out and it reduces uh, back orders. Uh, inventory sub subsystem also balances uh, maintenance and purchasing uh, costs through econo economic order quantity, so it is important for an organization to um, have um, lower cost purchasing and maintenance costs in pr uh, the production of uh, a good or finished product. And then uh, this uh, subsystem also use a reorder point system or ROS which uh, helps an organization keep the inventory alive. Next would be the quality subsystem and this monitors uh, quality of goods uh, from the receipt of uh, raw materials up to the production of finished goods. So it is a challenge for every organization to keep uh, high quality uh, at a least cost. And quality subsystem also uses uh, total quality management or TQM which focuses on uh, quality assurance and uses some graphical tools such as histogram, Pareto analysis, and cost and effect diagram. Last but not the least uh, for the uh, output subsystem would be the cost subsystem which uh, prepares uh, demand and periodic reports to reflect uh, costs associated with uh, manufacturing processes. So, um, there are different uh, management levels in a manufacturing information system, and these are outside uh, those levels uh, with uh, examples of how manufacturing information system is used. So, under a strategic level, so organizations are able to locate new plant which can save costs and invest in new manufacturing technology. Under knowledge level, so they could uh, distribute knowledge to drive the production process and innovate new forms of uh, manufacturing processes. And then uh, under management level, so they could monitor production cost and resources. And last but not the least, um, the operational level, so uh, it allows them to uh, track status of production tasks. So that's all for uh, the manufacturing information system. Have a great day.